Every now and then, YouTube takes a video and rams it down everybody's throats through their recommendation feed. Maybe this video ended up in your recommendations. If so, leave a like. It would be interesting to see that. But there's a specific type of video that really gets pushed by the algorithm. It's the type of video that appeals to the people who really liked that one scene in Toy Story 2. Restoration videos. And to be fair, I can see the appeal. It would be satisfying to see something that's old and rusted out, brought to new life and put back into working order. But is it not really only satisfying? if it's real. Today I'd like to talk about a guitar restoration video which I don't believe to be even remotely real even though it seems to be trying its very best to make you believe it is. It's currently just a few thousand views away from one million views and that's in four weeks and it's showing no sign of stopping. Now I was on the fence about making this video because there is the willing suspension of disbelief, maybe it's just entertainment purposes. But when the legitimacy of the video was questioned by commenters and then a YouTuber, Landon Bailey, his video link is there, the comments on the original video were turned off. And since then I've seen people in Landon's video's comments adamantly and profusely defending the legitimacy of this video, saying that maybe the story of the guitar's restoration where he found it isn't real, that bit staged, but the restoration of the guitar itself, the work on it, is real. Well simply put, I don't believe that any part of this restoration is real, and I'd like to show you why. Alright, so this is the shed that this guitar is in. Door is open, so uh, everything inside is going to be somewhat exposed to the elements, but wood inside looks okay. Uh, we can pause there, look, some metal chains on the inside of the door. Uh, one looks a little bit rusty, the other one perfectly fine, but they are close to the open door. Let's go a little bit further into the shed. A guitar. In, in not a great condition. It's covered in uh, quite a bit of dust and residue. Now I think most people would look at this and say that's probably not really where the guitar was found. It was just placed there for a little bit of added spice for video purposes, entertainment purposes only. Uh, but the restoration part is real. Alright, we take the guitar outside, brush it off. Um, paintwork looks pretty good. Oh, it's a Fender. And as the video title would suggest, Fender Stratocaster Rescue Restoration Abandoned Old Guitar Part 1. Quite an unusual bit of wear on that fretboard, don't you think? And if this guitar was an old guitar like uh, it supposedly is, you'd think that uh, maybe the previous owner had something against the 9th to 12th fret and really, really played the 21st fret more than I think I've seen anyone ever. Of course I'm just messing, that wear wasn't played into it. It came from the heavily criticised for just that reason, the wear doesn't really make sense, Fender Road Worn series that originally came out in 2009. We can compare the guitar in the video to a Fender Road Worn Strat and the wear on the fretboard and the body is the exact same. The Fender Road Worn series came out in 2009, meaning that the oldest this guitar could possibly be is 13 years old. Now after he clears off most of the debris off the guitar, we get to see a closer look and it's rather rusted out for a maximum 13 year old guitar but something's a little bit off here L let's just take a quick look at the tuners the d string tuner for example uh it's reflecting the light a little bit unusual it's, it's got a bit of a texture on it now that doesn't mean anything it doesn't prove anything but it's just something to keep in mind as we go further now we'll take some screws out of the pick guard and screws rust all the time in well played guitars but it's mainly the top of the screws, not the full way down, because that's protected by the wood in the guitar. It's just a little bit unusual, and oh my god, this shot tells me absolutely everything I need to know about the validity of this video. Um, I don't believe it at all. Time for a lesson in metals and alloys used on guitars. Okay, this could get complicated very quickly, so I'm going to gloss over a lot. There's two main alloys for frets and hardware used on electric guitars, especially on strats like the one in the video. For the hardware, such as the bridge, that's made of steel. And steel is an alloy of iron, so it can and does rust. But the rust will be a browny, reddish, orange colour. It is possible for steel to rust green, but this is uncommon, and that's produced in low oxygen environments, i.e not in a woodshed, so just keep that in mind. Most frets, including the ones that we're looking on 
the guitar today, are made of nickel silver. It's a deceiving name, there is no silver involved, it's an alloy of copper. Copper, nickel and zinc. And while that doesn't rust, it certainly can tarnish. Now copper on its own oxidizes and it turns a mint green. A prime example is the Statue of Liberty. But frets are not made of pure copper. It's an alloy, copper, zinc and nickel, which means it's not going to turn that Statue of Liberty green. Frets tarnish, they can over a long period of time go a dark brown with a hint of green. They're not going to go the mint copper green. But if the frets were really in such a severe state as we see in the video, the rust would a at least affect the finish on the fretboard that's close to the frets and b to get them back into working order you'd need to do a fairly severe fret level <laughs> look at them and every single one there's not one fret that got away even the frets that weren't played by uh the player of this guitar every single fret has gone green now onto the trem and this one is rustier than a sunken shipwreck the uh, entire thing is completely caked in rust uh so he removes the tram and we get a bit of a closer look absolutely everything in this guitar is rusted sorry rusted again the entire screw is uh rusted which i find it hard enough to believe especially considering it really doesn't affect the wood like the finish is worn where it was painted to be worn within the in the vendor Mexican shop. So a very rusty, rusty bridge here. Uh, the rustiest I think I've ever seen. It, it really does look like it was sunk to the bottom of the ocean and so does the neck plate. Uh, here's a comparison between this neck plate and Rory Gallagher's neck plate. And I would remind you that Rory had acidic sweat which just burnt through the nitro finish on his Strat. That was his neck plate. This is this neck plate. And here's another reason why I just don't believe it. Right, here's the rusty plate. And then the finish underneath is brand new. It is shiny. The conditions for rust also affect a nitrocellulose finish, which is what the road warns were finished in. This wouldn't look like that if that rust is real. He takes a lot of the parts off the guitar. Uh, yet the entire screws are rusted. And then we get to see the tuners. Notice the palette of colours that the uh, the rust has on these uh, tuners, caked in rust, specifically green rust. They don't contain copper. <laughs> oh, look how green they are. That's not a thing. Jack plate is completely rusted out. Let's see what's on the underneath. Yeah, absolutely, 100% brand new. All right, he takes the pick guard off, and this is the biggest clue that whoever is doing this really doesn't want you to know what this guitar is they don't want you to break the illusion and they're putting uh, quite a bit of work i would say into hiding what this guitar is let's take a quick look at a standard fender road worn body you see when fender came out with the road worn series because it's to look like a vintage well used guitar they put some thought into perhaps the unscrupulous nature of certain people who might part out the bodies and sell them off as original pieces, original Fender bodies. And uh, to avoid this happening, they stamped into the wood, Road Worn. And of course, there's also the mounting hole for the CNC machine in the body that's underneath the pickguard. And just conveniently, there happens to be the one bit of foil. Now, most of the time, when people put foil in the guitars, they put it actually in the control cavity. But this owner has put it just on the body in a random place. Or is it random enough to just cover the road-worn stamp and the mounting hole? I'd also point out that on every Fender made in Mexico body, they've got a barcode underneath the finish in the control cavity, also for keeping track in the factory. And to remove it, it's not just peeling a sticker, it's actually under the lacquer and under the finish. So you have to cut that out. That's missing from this one. I wonder why. All right, now we get to see the body. And very clearly, again, the wear on it. That's a Fender Road Worn Strat. One thing to note here in a second is notice this uh, polishing compound that he's putting on the body. Uh, that will come back later. Rusted up strap pins too. There is not a piece of metal on this guitar that doesn't have rust on it. I don't believe it for a second and I'll show you why. Firstly, we're gonna get an angle now. For one, that rust has brush marks in it. 
It, it's like actual strokes of a paintbrush marks on it. Now, some people might question, you know, this video has a million views. I can't believe that. It, it doesn't deserve these views. I personally think it deserves more because he's managed to turn steel, which is what this bridge is made of, into copper. He's completely bending the properties of metal. That's not a thing. And also, you know, you can see the brush strokes where the rust is painted on on the trim block. Now, fake restoration videos on YouTube aren't a new thing, but they're fairly uncommon when it comes to guitar. And there are two ways that you can fake a restoration video. There is the convincing way, and then there's the not as convincing way, but a lot easier to fix. The convincing way is by artificially rusting the metals, but it is real rust. And then there's the not as convincing way, the way that I believe this video has been done. There's no real rust, it's paint. It's a lot more effort to do convincingly, but it's got the added benefits of it being a lot more easy to remove, as you'll see, and it doesn't affect the metals in any structural way like rust can. All right, now this is the best part, because if you're still not having doubts, this should uh, tell you all you need to know. Just taping off the fretboard like you would if you were gonna do some fretwork, although it's a little bit different. You see, rust, when it affects a metal, isn't something that just comes off and leaves no trace of it ever being there. It's not something that has no effect. He's putting on a clear solution. Uh, if I was placing bets, I'd say it's white spirits or something like that. Uh, he's being very gentle with this clear solution, whatever it is. Uh, almost barely touching the frets. What he does is he brings back that uh, polishing compound that he was using on the body or something that looks very much like it. He's using a microfiber cloth and he's managing to get rid of all of the rust. Bear in mind it looked like the Statue of Liberty when we started and he's managing to just get it off with not even elbow grease. A, a gentle rub. Just completely, it just disappears. He, he must have asked it nicely. I decided to Google up the rustiest frets I could possibly find. And how the luthier dealt with it was a really heavy and harsh fret level. He removed a lot of material, leveled the frets completely, had to re-crown them, re-polish them, redo everything to save the frets. And they were in much better condition than the frets that we, uh, we saw at the beginning of what this guitar looked like. And he's managed to completely repair them with a microfiber cloth. What? That is a magic microfiber cloth, I will tell you that much. So we get three loads of water, maybe white spirits, and then he adds this powder that gives it quite a fizz. Now that could be some sort of uh, agent that is to remove rust, or it could also just be, you know, like liver salts to give the pot a bit of a fizz for dramatic effect. And the reason that I say that is this channel has a couple other Restor restoration videos. Now the guitar video ends abruptly. It is part one and we're yet to see part two. What I particularly like about this video is where he de-rusts a rusty car. Look how rusty it is. Oh, it's, it's completely rusted out. That needs some serious abrasion to remove that rust. So please note the direction in which this box is placed, the direction in which the car is, uh, and this sticker, this has got the big end this end and the little end on this side of it let's just see what happens and what agent he's going to use to remove the rust oh it's it's coke uh no that's not how it works right the box please note the box has completely flipped the little end of the sticker is on this side now now the car has also completely flipped, and some magic coke. It's completely removed any spot of rust, and no damage to the metal underneath. That I, I'm gonna buy some shares in, in coke, because uh, that's magic. Now in reality, there's a lot of videos out there that are just for entertainment purposes, and if this was for your entertainment purposes, well, then there's no problem with that at all. But just know that the techniques used here won't actually fix any problems with a guitar with real issues. So willing suspension of disbelief? Sure. Bit of entertainment? Yeah. But if you think it's real? Alright, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.